Hi, my name is Dawn Jeffers and I am here today to talk to you about creativity. We're going to have three parts to this creativity workshop. I'm going to do part one and part two and Mrs. Harrison is going to lead you through part three. So let's get started. You're probably wondering why is it important that we learn about being creative? Well, I can give you a great answer to that. We have found and research has shown that students and parents that can think creatively are students and parents that can solve problems better. So creative thinking helps you to become better problem solvers. And since we have so many problems, big and small problems, every single day of our lives, it's a really important strategy to learn how to, how to use. So we're going to help you learn how to think more creatively. So let's get started. When we think about creativity, our first word we think of is fluency. And fluency is when we have many ideas. So if I say fluency, I want you to repeat that. Fluency. Great, and the next thing you're gonna say is many ideas. Fluency is many ideas. Whenever we're brainstorming, we want many ideas to start with. So I'm gonna ask you a question, and whenever someone asks you a question that you're gonna be brainstorming with, I want you to just stop and think first. All right, so here's my question to you. If, you, um, if I asked you to list everything that was read, Ooh, all right, I want you to think about that. So close your eyes and think for 30 seconds. Ready, go. Excellent, all right. So I hope you've got some good things in your mind. Now what I'd like to do is I would like the teacher to turn off the video and while the video is turned off I would like each one of you to share your ideas and the way you're going to do it is if there's one of you then you and the teacher just share ideas if there's a couple of you I want you to go around the room and take turns so that everyone gets an opportunity and I want you to keep sharing until 30 seconds goes by while you're doing that, I'd love for the teacher to write down the ideas on the board or on a sheet of paper to see how many ideas you get in 30 seconds. Okay, now let's say it comes to you and you can't think of anything, that's okay. It's okay to get stuck, it's not okay to stop. So if you get stuck, I want you to look around the room, I want you to build off someone else's idea or you can ask the teacher for help, okay? All right, so let's turn the video off and then you guys are gonna brainstorm for 30 seconds all the things that you can think of that are red. All right, ready, turn off the computer. All right, the video is back on. I hope you got some good things. Let's see what we were able to come up with. So I said Rudolph's nose, an apple, a helmet for a UGA football player, and a cardinal. All those things have something to do with being red. I bet you have some excellent things on that list too. So if you had a lot of things listed, that meant you had great fluency. All right, the next area of creative thinking, we th well, the next word is flexibility. When we talk about flexibility, we're talking about different groups of ideas. So that's when you, you're thinking about the question, like everything that's read, and you're putting it in groups. Let me show you what I mean. So right here, we have one group called food. And we've got ketchup, red, jello, and apples. All those things are red, right? And they're in the category of food. Then we have a category of animals. Cardinal, toucan, hummingbird, or a hummingbird's neck. I actually have a hummingbird in my backyard that's got a red neck. And so those are all animals. Another group would be things that have to do with sports. UGA bulldog's helmet, a baseball, like the baseball, the stitches on the, on the ball, characters or, you know, things from books or movies. We had Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, a Spider-Man, or Little Red Riding Hood. What other groups do you have? So now I want you to pause the video and then I want you to talk about that with your groups and see if you can take the ideas you had and put them into groups. Now, 
when you see these groups, sometimes it helps you think of other ideas. So if you want to add, add ideas to your groups, go right ahead. So like to the food one, I was thinking pizza because there's that red sauce on it. And so go ahead and write those ideas. Let's get the teacher to write down the different groups and see if you can put your ideas in some groups. So go ahead and pause the video now. Excellent. All right. So I bet you've got a lot of groups. So remember, let's go ahead and review our two words. Ready? We have fluency, which is many ideas, and we have flexibility, which is different groups of ideas. So with my hands here, I'm like pretending I've got different groups and it helps us brainstorm more things. Good job. All right. Let's see what's next. All right, our next word is elaboration. I love this word because it's got two parts to it. The first part is talking about piggybacking, okay? When you piggyback onto someone or like imagine someone hopping on your back, you're like getting a piggyback ride. I like to think of koala bears and the way the baby piggybacks onto the mom. But when we think about that in ideas, it's like you're piggybacking off of someone's idea. Okay, so you're not copying the idea, you're adding on to it or making it a little different to make it your own. For instance, when, oh, and I'm going to show you a for instance in just a second. The other part is adding details. So I do this, adding details. So you're imagining that you're writing with something and you're adding details to something. So let's do that again. So we have elaboration, piggyback, adding details. Let me show you some examples for that. So this is the word strawberry. Remember, strawberry was one of the words that we had written down. Well, when we heard strawberry, someone might elaborate off of strawberry and say cherry. They're both fruits, but it's a different type of fruit. Another way you could elaborate off of cherry is you could think of what are some things that are made out of cherries. So we said cherry pie, cherry lip gloss, cherry soda, cherry on top of a sundae. So look at all the ideas we have just by thinking of the word strawberry. Isn't that cool? So that's when we say we're elaborating or we're piggybacking off of someone. We hear an idea and we like it and we build off of it. When we add details, this is an example of adding details. So a red-throated hummingbird, like if someone said a bird that's red, that's great. But adding the details of the specific name is a great way to add details. Strawberry on the vine, because we know about strawberries, but now we're learning about how they're growing and we're adding that little bit of information. So now we've got three areas. We've got fluency, which is many ideas. We have flexibility, which is different groups of ideas. And then we have elaboration, which is piggybacking, piggybacking, or adding details. So now I'd like you to make, look at that list of words that you have on the board that have to do with um, things that are read. And I'd like to see if you could elaborate off of any of those words. Do you see any of those words and they make you think of something else that's read? Or can you add some details to something that will help you to um, describe something better? So go ahead and pause the video. And while it's paused, I want you to share with your teacher how you could elaborate and add a new idea or add some details to a current idea. So please pause the video. Excellent. And now you're back. So I hope you're able to use elaboration to come up with some more ideas. All right. So, ooh, I love this. This this is a great slide. This says, what do you do if you cannot think of another idea? It says, what do you do if you feel stuck? It's always okay to be stuck. That is okay. I'm totally fine if a child comes up to me and said, Miss Jeffers, I'm stuck. I'm having trouble thinking of another idea. One thing we don't say is, 
I don't have any ideas. Because we all have ideas, we just have to, to find them in our brains. So you can say you're stuck. So if you're stuck, what I'm going to say to you is I might say, let's look around the room and see if we can find something that will help you think of another idea. Oh, look at my water bottle. My water bottle has all kinds of stickers, okay? So it might make me think of something like here, it says Holland on my water bottle. Well, when I think of the word Holland, I think of tulips, red tulips. That's another thing that's red. Or you might see one that says London, that's a country. Oh, I think of the beef eaters, which are the soldiers in London, and they wear those red coats. So see, I thought of two ideas just by looking at my, my water bottle. So that's something you can do. Another thing you can do is close your eyes and think about another place you visited, like the grocery store or a country you visited or your bedroom to help you think of more ideas. And then another thing, it says turn the paper around or upside down. Well, what that means is let's say I've given you something to look at and you're looking at it and you can't think of any more ideas. Well, you could always turn it to another position and see if by turning it around you can think of something else. Some of my students need to get up and, and walk around a little bit to think of ideas. Or sometimes people close their eyes and think of ideas. So remember, it's okay to be stuck. It's not okay to stop. All right, let's look at our last area of creative thinking. So remember, we have fluency, many ideas. We have flexibility, different groups of ideas. We have original, oh, sorry, I just went in the wrong order. We have elaboration, which is piggyback, adding details. And now we have an originality. So when we talk about originality, we are going to say unusual ideas because originality is when you have an idea that no one else has thought of. I have so many students that have given me original ideas. I love it. I just love hearing their original ideas. And so when you're thinking of an idea that you're, you think, I don't think anybody else is going to say it, it might be an original idea. So let's look at what our practice for that is. So here are some original ideas, some unusual ideas. The red scar on Harry Potter's forehead. So when you're thinking about the things that are red, here are some more red things. The red nail polish on a witch's fingernails. The red sand from Mars. Did anyone talk about Mars today? Um, your face turning red from anger. Ooh, I've seen that happen a few times. Or you might talk about a red letter day. That means a really special, important day. Or you might say the business is in the red this month due to the pandemic. So when you're talking about something being in the red, it's talking about how they are um, maybe financially having some difficulty. All right, so those are some unusual ideas that we might call original. All right, so now we're getting ready for part two. So before we go to part two, I'd like you to please um, repeat for me the four areas of creative thinking. Okay, here we go. Fluency, many ideas flexibility, different groups of ideas, elaboration, piggyback, adding details, and originality, unusual ideas. Excellent. All right, so you can go ahead and turn this video off and we will get ready for part two. What I'd like you to have ready for part two is I'd like you to have some post-it notes and some little pieces of paper and something to write with, preferably a pencil. All right, see you in just a minute.